video of Mohammed Muhaisen. It's called My Journey. He's a world-renowned photographer, a two-times Pulitzer Prize winner, a National Geographic photographer, founder and chairman of the Dutch non-profit organization Everyday Refugees Foundation. He's the global ambassador for Jordan Tourism Board. If you listen to this, you find yourself thinking that when does he have time to be a photographer? He has been documenting the refugee crisis around the world for a decade. I'd like to introduce you him to him to come to the stage, Mr. Mohammed Mohazen, and to take him on his journey. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Mohammed Mohazen, and I would love to share with you my, my journey. I'm a Jordanian national who was born in Jerusalem. Being a kid in that part of the world, in the late 80s, they didn't leave me much options to act as a kid, as the news was everything in my life. It was the morning talk, the evening talk, it's all about what's happening in the region. However, that changed the moment that I met my grandmother's Polaroid, this magical box that when you press a button, a piece of paper comes out documenting that exact moment that we get to keep it with us the rest of our life. I fell in love with photography. I found my passion. I opened my eyes and I used to see colors. Beautiful scene. I became passionate about the environment surrounding me, the nature. And I dreamt someday I'll be able to capture these colors and share it with the world and color their world. The environment played a major role in my life. I graduated with a BA degree in journalism and political science to combine my education with my passion to be a good storyteller, as I always believed in the importance of photography and in documenting, but I needed to find my way through that. In 2001, I joined the AP to cover the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Shortly after, I became an international photographer covering the region. In 2003, I was there during the US-led war in Iraq. I was young, terrified, and inexperienced. I thought being born in a conflict, I know it all. However, I discovered in Iraq that I know nothing and war is the darkest place to be in the middle. Iraq was the place that changed me, changed my life totally, personally and professionally. I never remained the same person after. Um, many of the pictures that we captured in Iraq could have cost us our lives. And if time goes back, you ask yourself the question, would I have been there and, and did what I did? The answer is always yes, because we, we believe that if something happens and never been documented, it's like it never occurred. And that was the, the importance of being there to document and share with the world what's happening. I kept traveling from one country to another, and most of these countries shared the conflict in common. I went to Yemen, where I was stabbed. I went to Afghanistan where I lost my best friend. I went to Syria where my heart was broken. And I went to Egypt where once I fell in love with that place. And in the middle of that journey, I realized if, if the news is right in front of me and I just simply turn around, I will witness a total different scene. A scene full of life instead of death. It's, as whenever there used to be a funeral in the right, there was simply a baby being born in the left. It's like a smile in the middle of the rubble. And this is the theme that I started to work on, focusing mostly on children, as I personally believe that children are the real victims of conflict. Children all over the world, they seek the same things in common. They seek fun, they seek joy, they seek happiness, and that's what I tried to show in my images. As with my work, I wanted 
to spread more awareness. I wanted to change stereotypes, and I wanted to raise the voice of the people that I photograph. As it's, it's not just a picture. It's a message, it's a voice, it's a testimony of a child or an adult from part of the world to the other part of the world. As behind these images, there are people. Most of these people had homes and hopes, memories and dreams, and they were forced to leave everything behind in search for a new safe place. My journey. So my journey goes back to 20 years. So before we go further, I would like to show you this selection of images, this slideshow of 20 years of my life through pictures.
I never forget any of the children that I photographed and became known by their photographs. They are part of my life as I am part of theirs. I've seen many of these children growing in front of my eyes and my lens, and it became so important for me to share their stories with the world. One of these children is a young Afghan refugee girl who I met for the first time in 2010, Laiba Hazrat. She was that beautiful girl with the most beautiful face. When I portrayed Laiba, her picture was published. I received numerous of emails and messages and gifts from people from different parts of the world. And it was important for me to locate her and, and deliver these gifts for her. My pictures reached the word, the photographer became the bridge and the messenger, and that's why I'm a photographer. Another story of Zahra Mahmoud. I met Zahra for the first time in 2014. It was shortly after she and her family fled the war in Syria and took refuge in neighboring Jordan. She was very sad very quiet, and the scars of war can be seen all over her tiny face. I badly wanted to tell her story to the world. I, after seeking permission from her father, I portrayed Zahra, and her portrait was published in every major media platform out there. She became the face of that war. A year after, she was awarded UNICEF Picture of the Year. Unfortunately, nothing changed in her life. So I made it my mission, a commitment, a responsibility to keep telling Zahra stories. So wherever I travel in the world, I talk about Zahra. In Sharjah, I talk about Zahra. I have an exhibition, Zahra is always there. I'm in touch with Zahra since then. Every year, I visit her once and twice to keep her stories going. And last time I've seen Zahra in February 2020, her picture is in the uh, gallery there. And I managed to see her through a video call in April and remain in touch on the phone. There is a hope out there and we should never stop believing. Another story of Manar. I met Manar in June 2018 in a camp north of the Greek capital. And what really surprised me, I asked Manar a question, what do you remember of home? So she answered me, what do you mean by home? I said, Syria. She told me, I remember nothing except the, the sound of the jets flying over our home. And that's a sign of a trauma, a child, and a, trauma, a traumatized child simply because of the war. However, later in that year, I had an exhibition in Greece, and Manor's picture was among the pictures, so it was important for me to invite her. We located her, and she came to the exhibition, and she was very happy, very emotional. She told me in Arabic, I'm so proud to, to see my picture among these pictures. I'm so happy to present the Syrian children through my picture. So I, f I knew here that I made it a little bit of difference in her life. She felt that she mattered. And now I would like to introduce you to some of the children that I met 
through my journey. In 2015, I stood with my camera on the shores of the Greek island of Lesbos to document the refugee crisis in Europe, where thousands and thousands of people fled war, poverty, and discrimination in search for a new safe home. That year was the year that I decided to do something about it. Not only to be the messenger or the guy who brings simple kindness, but also to commit all of me to the cause of helping those in need simply through my passion, photography. I have seen people who look just like me. I've heard languages that I'm familiar with. I've seen myself, my family, my friend, any one of us making this dangerous journey on a dinghy just to be in a safe place. And this is when I decided to create Everyday Refugees Foundation, where through photography, we document, educate, help, and empower refugees, local communities, and internally displaced people in different parts of the world. Um, technology made it possible and I personally believe that there is nothing impossible if we work hard, if we believe in ourselves, and if we follow our hearts. We live in a period that in seconds we can deliver the message from the field to the doorsteps of people. And I took advantage of this technology to make a difference through the foundation. In 2017, I became a National Geographic photographer. And my first assignment was in January to document the unaccompanied refugee minors stranded in, in Serbia. It was a very sad story to tell, where hundreds of refugees took shelter in abandoned warehouses behind Belgrade Central Station. It was minus 20 degrees. They slept on the ground, they gathered around fires to shield from the, from the cold, they inhaled the toxic smoke. It was 
very sad story and very important story to share it with the world as there were there are so many questions that needed to be answered just as why would an eight-year-old boy walk all the way from Afghanistan to Europe or why would a 12-year-old kid take shelter in a jungle between the Croatian and Serbian border as Nobody leaves their home unless they are forced to leave their home. And that's what I wanted to answer and share with the world. Um, I spent most of that year in Serbia. And when the story was published, I returned back to Serbia with the team of Everyday Refugees Foundation. And this time, we came to deliver help. We distributed proper footwear warm clothes, and it was so important for me to check on the children that I met earlier in that year. The foundation now in 2021 managed to help thousands of people in different parts of the world simply through photography. And one of the projects that I'm most proud of it is about education. Education is a better future. We just launched in December and in January to help Afghan refugee girls and the outskirts of the Pakistani capital. You help a child, you provide a better future for them and their family. I'll show you shortly a small video about the foundation. I mean, many of you have seen the work that I showed you before from conflict to, to project with the foundation to portraying victims of war. However, there's a side of me, of me not a lot of people knows about that. Whenever I'm not on assignment or working on a project with the foundation, I simply carry my camera and take pictures of beautiful things surrounding me. And I call it our world. Our world is simply pictures that I capture of things that I pass by as a reminder how beautiful this planet that we live by. I feel so lucky to meet a lot of people along my journey. And I'm so glad to be standing here today. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you all. Thanks to Sharjah. Thanks to everybody who simply made a difference today by coming to my seminar and hear the stories. Difference begins from the, the first step we take. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed, for uh, inviting us on your journey and for your incredibly powerful work uh, and sharing that with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will be back at 3.45. Please join us where our next uh, presenter uh, 